Hello, hello. We are making a video together. It is nice. <laughs> yes, it is nice. My baby dog and I together forever. Yes, it is nice. That is nice. That is nice, he said. Yes. <laughs> mm, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Infinity, oh. Yes. I love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you. Oh, yeah. I love you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pillow head. Chicken. Mm. Uh -huh. Chicken. Yes, <laughs> in chicken. That is in the chicken. The dog. Yes, in the chicken. Okay, now that was that was very very nice video together. So, okay. I also want to take a photo of my artwork that I made. The baby dog on the lawn. Yes, nice painting that I have there. I don't dare to swing the camera over because Paul might walk by and then he might be in the, in the video. And that would be terrible because... He can't be in the video, but my artwork can be in the video. And then later I'm going to walk over there and film my other painting that I made of the baby dog. This here is an older painting in two pieces. This is called Together Forever. This is me, Nikki in the middle, and this is Kenny Redwood that I'm holding on the parking lot of the veterinarian. And behind me is the Papa Dog. Papa Dog Dave. Yes, that is a nice painting of the Papa Dog. Very nice. So, yes, we had the Papa Dog in 2018 on that beautiful, beautiful, infinitely wonderful camping trip to the hot springs and the high desert and to the Antelope National Forest and Nevada, and California Desert and Virgin Valley Hot Springs. And that's where I found two opal rocks and bog hot springs. That was the ultimate. I mean, the place itself, unfortunately, is kind of trashed because there are so many people. But when we got there, I could sense that there was someone very special. But I, I could not really I couldn't really identify who that would be so I just sensed there was someone very special there a Buddha level soul and my body just was on fire <laughs> suddenly and I didn't even know why so <laughs> Very, very weird situation. Oh my gosh. Hmm.
The most amazing man in the world was there. <laughs> and and I didn't even know about his channel <laughs> because because I'm so different. I'm I'm so weird. You know, I blame myself for that. You know, I'm just you know, if someone would come up to me and say, "Here, I can like Paul, for example, you know, we talked about this earlier. You need to do what the people want to see. <laughs> yeah. But I can't, okay, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Even if someone put the gun to my head, I could not make my video in the way that people would want to see it. <laughs> I couldn't. But I guess that's that's what that's what a clown and an artist is you know so I guess that's I guess maybe I've been I don't know if I, I've been indoctrinated about this because my dad kind of talked about this always my dad kind of groomed me into also being an artist but I started painting when I was two so I, I really did. It was just scribble stuff, but but I was fascinated with scratching something on a paper. So yeah, and painting and aquarelle, and finger paint on window and all kinds of stuff that I did. All kinds of experiments. I wanted to be a frog when I was like three years old and I put green silver material on my body <laughs> and then I wanted to be Pippi Longstocking with a wig <laughs> all kinds of stuff yeah so I wanted to be an Indian girl like the the Native American Indian girl, we called them Indian, of course, in the past, you know, the Wild West films and stuff. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> so, and then I painted a painting, and here I go again. You know, I tried to make a video earlier on the lawn. And I wanted to make this, I wanted to make it an upbeat video because I know most people want to see an upbeat video and I try but it loops back into bummed out. <sighs> Total bum. So, <sighs> yeah. It is what it is. What it. I'm not gonna delete this video now. So sorry, it's not gonna happen, because I have good footage on here now with the baby dog. I'm not gonna delete the video. I want to keep this. I want to make this video positive as positive as I can. But I am sad and I am bummed out. I cried all day long, all day long. And at some point, I just couldn't cry anymore. So, and then I ate something. I ate potatoes <laughs> because I'm a couch potato. That's why. And then I drank some water. I drank hot chocolate. And now I, then my blood sugar spiked up again. And I had a little bit more energy. Oh, gosh. And then, yes, they, I always look at the, there's a clock projection of the clock that is reversed upside down. And the clock says, hi, eight. <laughs> hi. And now it says, C, eight. C, C means, means yes. Yes. That, that thing there agrees with me. So, 
Yeah, and the haters followed me into my dreams last night. <sighs> They're trying to give me a hard time. I cried all day long about the haters, all day long. I don't know for how much longer I'm going to be crying about the haters, but... Yeah, I cry. I cry about you guys. I cry for you also. I cry with you. I cry the tears that you can't cry. You, don't, you, you can't cry. So I have to cry for you. You know, I have to cry for like 10 men. I have to cry rivers out of my eyes. So that will cover all of us. Okay, that's what I have to do. <sighs> that's very exhausting. So, but it is what it is, okay? All of those, they're all my children. I'm the mother of all beings. That's the truth. I'm the psycho mother. <laughs> the mother of Norman Bates. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I had a boyfriend with the name Norbert. That came closest to it, so. <laughs> but not Norman. So there's a guy with the name Norman that lives down the hill from us. He has dogs too, but he's not like Norman Bates. So I'm so glad <laughs> the neighbors here are nice. So that's very that's very nice. I'm grateful for that. So oh my gosh, yeah, but. Yeah, it's it's not fun you know, to be hated. It's not fun at all. And I always try to make everyone happy, but you can't make everyone happy. Particularly not narcissists. You know, every narcissist wants to be the center of the universe. And if uh, if someone talks to another narcissist, then the other narcissist is mad. And that's how it works with narcissists. Okay, so. <laughs> Oh, but but I care about everyone. I do. But I can't hang out with narcissists. Not even on the internet anymore. I can't do it anymore. So the videos of Jimmy, they really turned that around. So once I get, once I really saw what an amazing guy Jimmy is, I was like, wow completely this is it yeah. I only want to be around nice people like Jimmy and his friends and the only man I ever want is Jimmy and obviously this is <laughs> like an alien spaceship landing in my garden so that is most likely not gonna happen and I'm not gonna be a stalker but I have the right to make videos about this, so that I can, without being a creep, okay? So I've already cre creeped after him enough now, so this is enough now with my creepy, creepy love letter comments and stuff. That. So that's enough now. I don't want to completely alienate and and sabotage the situation any further than it, it is already all completely out of the world just the situation itself is alien spaceship landing on my lawn so no but at Bark Hot Springs I I felt something I felt I, I did <laughs> I felt something so my gosh That is so, this is so surreal. So, yeah, the first video I watched was like, reminds me of Hunger Games, video games and stuff like, it, it's not, that's not, first of all, I'm like two generation over that, and I'm not putting that down or anything, that's just, I'm, that's just too far this is just, it just isn't who I am, but 
and I'm very weird, you know. I have Asperger's. I'm an introvert too. We have stuff to talk about, you know. <laughs> we do. We have so much stuff to talk about that we can never talk about it all in our lifetime. Not even in your lifetime. My lifetime is, you know, a couple of more years. And unfortunately, I know I'm going to be assassinated. I already know that at 61. So that's a few more years for me. And then whew, I made it. I made it through this hell, hellish existence. Hellish, absolutely hellish. So, yeah, you had a good mother. Jimmy had a good mother. Has a good mother. Okay. Had a good mother in his childhood. Okay, still has a good mother. Okay. And she is probably even younger than I am. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can fall in love with someone. You can be 80 and fall in love with someone who's 20. It, you know, Harold and Maud, they did it. <laughs> there are plenty of people who do this, okay? So so that's not a problem at all. I have the right to fall in love with anyone I want to. Anyone or <laughs> any guy over 18, okay? So under 18, that would be too young, Oh, God. But, I mean, yeah, obviously, this is, this is very unrealistic, but my artwork is all about a dream world. My artwork is flowing out of proportions, you know, everything is flowing out of proportions. Things are stretching and bending and warping. Okay. And that's what art is about. Art is freedom. Art is not tethered to anything that we see in our environment. Some people might be sculpting rocks that they have seen at the ocean or landscapes and that's wonderful too the artist Henry Moore US artist Henry Moore somewhere around 1945-1950 brilliant amazing man and he created sculptures that could be found at the ocean you know rocks and caves and ocean rocks that have been tumbled tumbling through the ocean for millions of years some of those ocean rocks look like Henry Moore sculptures and I picked them up I brought them home and he makes those sculptures very large like as large as a semi truck and then they would be placed in the middle of a lawn and looks really, really outstanding. Those are amazing pieces. Henry Moore is an amazing artist. So, but yeah, and that's not my style, but I love his style. My style is just this here. <laughs> it's just w what it is. And I can't change that. That's what it is. And my videos are bumped out, and that's that's just what it is. And nobody could ever inspire me to make more dramatic and inspiring or whatever flamboyant videos, you know, because I just can't. Even if I tried, I couldn't do it. I don't want to edit my videos, even if I had an editing tool or something available. I don't have any here on my Chromebook. And I don't even I don't even know. Maybe they have one now that's free on the Google store. I haven't even looked into it. Because I just I don't want to edit my videos. I've experimented just a little bit with the kit camera in the past to put some weird eyes on my eyes and stuff like that. 
I have made some photos like this, but just because it was super easy to do, but I'm not real. I'm not into it. So. No, that's, it, I like it when people do it, but it's just not, it's not for me. So, I like videos boring. <laughs> that's just who I am, you know. I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not going to try to change that. So, it is what it is. My videos are much more introspective and reflective, contemplative, and sometimes my videos are relaxing, sometimes I can see tension, I can see that I'm hyper and nervous and with a lot of anxiety and anxiety and tension that's like that runs through my whole life, you know. That has to do with my childhood trauma. But I'm trying to heal this every day. And so, that is what I'm doing. Yes, this is my everything. You are my everything. Yes. He is my lifesaver. Okay, that is what he is. He is my lifesaver, and we are his lifesaver, and Jennifer is his lifesaver. She went all the way down to Fresno to pick him up. So, yeah, there, there, were, there were initially a lot of things that I wanted to talk about. And so... There are so many things at once, always in my head, you know, the haters, the way they approach a woman. They have to bully a woman, they find, they, they call that sexy talk. Maybe there are women that like that, but I don't. Okay, I don't want that. I don't want to hang out with people anymore that are bullying me, that are harassing me. I don't want to be mocked anymore. It it's toxic. It it doesn't taste good. It tastes toxic, you know. It it doesn't vibe with me. I'm an artist. I want to be left alone by haters. You know, I don't want to be bothered anymore by them. Please haters. Please go to parties, party with like-minded people, don't come after me anymore. It doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do anyone any good. So I have given, I really tried for over 10 years, I tried to, I tried to make the haters happy. They'll, they'll never be happy. They'll always wish me death. They wish me suicide. So introspect, you know, you know, you do it. You do that to, to regain a sense of control over the situation by making someone else cry that's definitely the wrong approach. Okay, so I don't want that anymore. I really don't. I don't deserve that. <sighs> Loneliness is really harsh. Not having a community. Not relating to it. I have nobody to talk to. There's nobody on the internet who talks to me. My brother talks to me maybe every four months or something. I don't know, maybe out of obligation or something. And so I have a, I go on a lot of people's nerves. And Sandy talks to me once in a while, but nobody owes me anything, okay? No one owes long, <laughs> endless f 
philo philosophy debates. And I, I can't expect that from everyone. Not everyone is into that. So what I'm into, long, endless philosophy conversations. I have not found one person. I have talked to my brother about philosophy and he was the only one who was willing to talk to me to a certain extent. Right? He always said to me, I follow you to a certain extent, but at some point I'm leaving him stranded behind. Right? So, And he didn't necessarily mean that in a complimentary way. <laughs> But, you know, so I'm, I'm looking for someone who would talk to me endlessly about philo philosophy. So that's, that's what I need. I desperately need that. Oh, I desperately need someone to talk to. Just a friend, you know, that would really be cool. If Jimmy could be my friend, that would be really cool. Gosh, man, that would be, I'd be over the moon. And if he could be my boyfriend, that would be heaven on earth. But I don't expect it. You know, I'm not gonna creep. I'm not. I'm not gonna creep. I wouldn't creep if we were just friends. If you say you just want to be friends, I would be perfectly fine with this. We can just have conversations about philosophy, and I will. I will not try to flirt with you. Okay, I will not. <laughs> I will not try to do any kind of witchy witchy spell or trick or whatever. You know. I don't do these kind of things. I never I was accused of that. I don't do that. I'm just me, you know. I'm very bubbly. Okay. That doesn't mean I'm flirting with someone. But the haters always think I'm flirting with everyone to, with every single person I just say hello to, you know. So no, that's not the truth. There's only one man I want, and that's Jimmy. And if I can't have him, then we can be friends. And if I can't be friends with him, then I will cry every day for eight hours for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's okay. It's not a big deal. Okay, I'm used to that. I mean, that's just... That's normal for me, you know. I have already been crying my whole life, literally. My whole life, from the moment I was born. <laughs> I was born screaming, screaming, my head, my eyes out. Screaming in extreme rage, with a red face. That's how I was born. And extremely mad at my mother. <laughs> well, that's why I didn't want to do that to my own offspring. Okay, so I spared them that, that agony. I spared them three times. Okay. Because I had to, I, I was not, I was psychologically not in any, not anywhere near. Uh, a balanced mental state, which a mother should be, you know. So those were accidents, and I don't recommend to people to carry out an accidental pregnancy. Okay, it's not a good idea. So, yeah, I like dogs, and I am. Um, I'm trying my whole life to heal my mental illness. And I want to talk to people about philosophy. I want to talk about the meaning of life, literally, you know. So what's the meaning of life? You tell me. Please tell me, okay? Anyone can write underneath. I mean, you can say anything you want to as long as... You know, as long as the haters don't say something really, really hurtful again or deliberately, emotionally abusive, 
I mean, you can write anything, any question. You can ask me anything, anything, even, even if it's a joke stuff question like Pat always does. You know? So I will answer. So did you do your hula hoop? I haven't done the hula hoop lately. I have been too bummed out. The other day I was upstairs. I was thinking about Pat saying, have you done the hula hoop? Yeah, I should be doing my hula hoop belly dance exercises because it's good for me. It's it's a be good thing to do for my belly. Yeah. But when I'm depressed, you know, it's very difficult to dance when you're depressed. It's very difficult to sing when you are very sad and depressed. And but I try to do all of that the moment I feel a little bit better or I get got a little break in between the bumped out stuff. Okay, so then I will do it. And I will play with the baby dog, I dance with the baby dog, he jumps on me, I dance, dancing with him, holding his arms, and so he likes that, and kissing, kissing with the baby dog a lot, he licks my belly, <laughs> because he is a God level soul, and he came here to help me, that's why, that's a soul contract, he came to help me. Because I prayed to the blue god, bring me a god level. I was thinking about a guy, <laughs> like bring me my dream man, and and I wouldn't even dare to ask for Buddha level. So, so I said, okay, if you could give me a god level man, that would be, I would be over the moon. But he didn't bring me a god level man. He brought me a god level dog man <laughs> so that's good too that's really good that is really really amazing an amazing present and jimmy is a buddha level very very high advanced buddha level so the buddha level souls that is that is level seven and level 8 is the 8 on the side. 8, 8E8, eight e eight, says it on the wall. <laughs> the 8 on the side is infinity. That's the, that's the infinite cosmos. That's the blue god. That is the, that's, that is the infinite state. Okay, that's when the soul merges with the infinite and Elon Musk is the next in line to merge with the infinite so after this lifetime yes the number is approaching no the number is approaching there it is there it is three 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 the blue god agrees with me it's the truth what I'm saying okay this is the truth so 8E8, 6E8, I don't know what that means, it's a sign from ETs, so some ET message is that, so 6 Eternity 8, so the 6 stands for life and body and fertility and sensuality and sexuality of course that represents all of that and that's wonderful okay and it's what the the god pan and the god that's the same as the god faunus that's what they stand for those are the pagan fertility god symbols just with different names, but the fertility god, the god of harvest and of sensuality. That's wonderful. So, 
and that's what Jimmy is. He represents all of that. He represents the god Faunus. So maybe that's what he is. You know. So that's what he. I think that is what he is. <laughs> he is the god Faunus. Now that I think about it, yeah, that is what he is. Okay, and he is very, very advanced. And so Buddha level is one level above God level. Buddha level is one level before merging into the infinite cosmos. And that green formation is the infinite cosmos. That is Kenny, the blue god. He came to us for almost nine years. He stayed with us. An albino Great Dane. People think I'm completely insane. <laughs> but that was one of his incarnations. And that this is absolutely amazing. This is absolutely amazing. It is the most amazing situation I have ever experienced in my life forever yeah. that Kenny came to us as a puppy <laughs> the blue god with light blue eyes deaf albino great dane the blue god and that was our final day on the parking lot of the veterinarian that was hardcore brutal That was like, uh, that was for me, that was like laying my head into the guillotine. Yeah, that's what it was. And then the papa came to us two months later to save me from suicide. And when the papa died, I felt like this is it. My life is, is finished. I had three suicide attempts after that. I thought there was no way I can handle that situation. But somehow I... I walked through this two years without the dog. And then he came to us. Because I prayed to the blue god. I wanted a European basset hound again like him. Because they're so practical, you know. But we found him at the animal shelter and and that big pillow head told me that is the that is the present from the blue god. He is that present, the god level soul present that the blue god is sending me to help me through life. Okay. And so I'm, I am <laughs> like holding on to, like in a jungle, you know, holding on, t on to one tree branch after another. One tree branch is about to crack. I grab another tree branch before falling down into a bog and sinking into the bog. That's kind of like what it feels like. So, yeah, this is an enormously difficult existence that I'm living. And other people will, they will disagree. <laughs> you have not even been for one hour in my shoes. Not even for one hour, not even for one minute. You don't know what it's like. I think most people, most people would get a heart attack if they tried to live in my brain for one hour, just for one hour. Different people have different things, you know. There are people that are physically handicapped in wheelchairs, 
I kept saying to my parents my whole life, if I can trade places with this or that person there in the wheelchair, I would do it. If they, you know, if they don't have the mental illness. If they have the mental illness, then I would have two handicaps, right, at once. I don't, there's no way I, I could handle that. So, I mean, I can just barely handle this here not being in a wheelchair. But if I could trade places with someone who is, like from my perspective right now as a woman, I would tr trade places with a woman, with a young woman in a wheelchair who just can't walk. For some reason, she can't use her legs but everything else functions and the brain functions and she doesn't have mental illness. I would pl I would trade places with her, okay? Here you can have, you can have this here. You can have this existence here. Yeah? So here I give you this spacesuit here. This Earthian spacesuit here. This try this. See how you go for one day. See how you do it. And then judge after that, after that one day. And if you you still want to keep this, if, if you're sure, you know, that you want to keep this, I'll be okay with it. If I never, if I can never walk again, but if I have my mental health, if I had a good mother who loved me unconditionally, like Jimmy had a good mother and, and has a good mother, so my, can you imagine what I could do with this with this brain, this brain here without mental illness? Can you imagine what I what I would do, what I could do? I told my my dad long time ago. I said, "Puppy, I, we call him Puppy, P A P I, like from Papa. That's the German nickname for Papa, Dad." Okay. Puppy, I said, if I could heal my mental illness one day, I can do. You have no idea what I could accomplish in my life, what I can do to make the world a better place. But the reason why... The reason why this is so difficult for me, why this is so long, winding and sluggish, this process of healing my mental illness, is because I have been traumatized very severely. I have been molested, I, ha I believe I have been raped at a very early age. I have, I had a lot of nightmares about this as a child. I have drawn paintings and drawings as a child about that. My therapist Annalise knew what was going on but as when when I was a child she didn't bring it up to my parents because she and her husband were friends with my parents and that would be very awkward to bring that up but she did towards the end of her life because she figured she did she has nothing to lose now so she was also mad at my parents for that and for my mother being an enabler and in denial and for my dad what doing what she ac accused him of doing I don't know I don't know who it was okay I have no recollections so could have been anyone could have been several people thank you the blue god agrees there was one guy in particular 
who I was very afraid of. And every time it came over, I would I was I'd scream and run and, and hide under my bed. And he would come finding me. That was before my brother was born. Like two, three, four, I was. There's no telling what it went on. I painted a painting after my brother was born when I was five. My brother was born when I was five and or five or six I was. I painted this painting. We were in my grandfather's bathroom. There were white tiles around us. And there is a really, really large, like some a predatory bird, a prey bird, but in form of like an ET prey bird ET. Very strange. I've seen that later on. I've seen, I've seen paintings of that later on. That I didn't even know that other people painted something like this as well. So, and people claim that that there are some kind of hybrids like this, or hybrid ETs or something, you know. But for me, this, this was more like a psychogram. This was, this prey bird was, this prey bird was really representing my grandfather. He was towering over us, and his nose was like a beak, and he used to do boxing when he was young, and his nose was really not like a beak, his nose was like flattened in, and I don't even know how his nose looks normally. so. He had very light blue eyes, almost white, and when he was angry, the color would fade out of his iris, irises, and he would look literally like a ghost, R really frightening. He had these unbelievable anger attacks all the time, and <laughs> well, that Paul, Paul keeps mocking me about that. Now that's where you got that from and all of that, the temper tantrums and all of that as a child. And then he would say, he would go on and say, you inherited only the worst from everyone. <laughs> so, well, that's not quite true because I'm an artist and I make beautiful artworks. And I'm a, uh, I'm a dog mother and I'm the mother of all beings and I have infinite love. I have a medusa, but I don't go into a temper tantrum because I don't get this or that. Not anymore, I did that as a child, so. But my grandfather did it his whole life. <laughs> so that's the difference between my grandfather and myself. So, but, yeah, my grandfather, I, I painted him. And I painted us kids all the way down at his feet and the Great Dane that he had at that time, Harlequin Great Dane. So here we were, the Great Dane looked kind of a little bit like Mickey Mouse. And my brother had this weird hat on and myself, you know, this the skinny spooky little girl with dark rings under her eyes. Yeah, and we were standing there in the bathroom and we were afraid of that big prey bird. And I gave it that name. My, my dad would always ask me, so what is the title to that painting or drawing? And then I would give him the title and he would write it down on the, on the bottom or on the back of that page. So he collected over a thousand paintings and drawings before I even ever got into Annalise, Annalise's play therapy. 
And so they brought all the paintings with them for that first interview that they had with Annalise before before she started with me with that therapy program. And she documented everything. She took photos of the artwork, professional photos, and these f and many of those very significant paintings, including the one in the bathroom that is in her book, that book called Betty, Protocol of a Child Therapy. So this this therapy lasted for a little over two years, and she wrote everything down, and she made a, a journal about it. After every session, I came to her twice a week, and then she she put this all brilliantly into the best book. Re that's really the best book in the field of psychology that I have ever ever seen, ever read, and I and I read that many times. So I started to translate it into English, but I only got a third through it because it brought up memories and it was quite difficult psychologically. But so I gave it a break. It's on it's on Blogger somewhere. It has been translated into English, but the translation is very poor. That's why I wanted to translate it again. I mean, it, it, it is a lousy, lousy translation with so many, so many mistakes in it and, and not even edited. And misunderstandings, grave misunderstandings in terms of translating it. When you translate something from one, one language into another, you have to really you have to really be at home in both languages and i don't think the translator was although she speaks fluent fluent german and english as i do but she was not completely like with one foot in each world which i was which i am now I am speaking, so just in the last couple of years, it tipped over into me speaking better English than German. Now. It's because I've lived in the English world, English speaking world, longer than in the German speaking world. But when I was, when I started tr to translate that book, I was like 50-50, you know, I was really at home. In both worlds, I was still talking to my mother on Skype all the time. And um, from, with, my da with my dad, with my brother too at that time. So now that has really tapered out and I don't talk to my parents anymore. My mother can't talk to me anymore. She has age-related dementia. They're taking care of her now. And my dad's still doing fairly well, but he's in a lot of denial. And so, but my brother is taking care of them as good as he can, I guess, you know. And I don't want to trade places with him at all. That must be very difficult. And even if he gets the entire inheritance, I will be okay with this because because he's dealing with this and it's very difficult. So whatever, whatever, whatever will come in the future. My main concern is that my parents are taken care of, that the money goes to their own welfare, their own well-being, their own nursing situation, nurses, caregivers, and so on, you know, so that live-in nurses and so on. That's what the money should be going for. And if the, all the money goes into that, they'll be okay. You know, as long as they don't have to ever suffer, 
you know. So my mother has already expressed that she wanted to be euthanized several times. They are not granting her that wish. They figure that just comes out of a spontaneous depression or something, but she said it so, so many times that I think someone has the right to express a wish like this and that this wish should be should be granted. So it's a little trickier when someone is my age, you know, so but if I went to Holland to the euthanasia clinic, I have the right to assisted death, assisted dying. Okay, peaceful. You know, there's one, there's one clinic that's very nice. I watched several documentaries after the papa died. I watched all that. I was like obsessed with that for one whole year oh only watching i was waiting to die you know i was like okay now i'm gonna go there i'm gonna i'm gonna end my life and and i was watching a lot of those documentary films of different euthanasia clinics there are, there i think there are there are some in switzerland also there are very progressive ones in holland Holland's very progressive in this way. Yeah, I had one abortion in Holland, so I had one in Germany and one in the United States. So, but if I went to Holland to the euthanasia clinic, then I would feel very safe, particularly the one where you know, they always have these people there for a week and they ask them every day. Every day, I think, every day they get up, you know, after breakfast. Someone comes in, they have an hour conversation with a the therapist and they ask them, are you sure you want to follow through with this? And they say, yes, please, I'm looking forward to this. Oh my God. Eternal paradise. No, it's not eternal yet. We're not there yet. A Buddha level soul is not going to do that. Okay. But, you know, Buddha level soul said they're so far advanced that they say, whatever happens, happens. And it is my school. And I'm going through this. If I'm tortured to death, if my arms are cut off by someone called Singleton. Okay, that is my life. I'm going to. This. I don't know. I don't know this girl if she's a Buddha level soul, but maybe she is. But a Buddha level soul says, whatever happens, whatever happens, you know, I'm going through with this. You know, however I am tortured by a beginner soul. So for, for the beginner soul to feel like they're in charge. So they all torture me and cut me into pieces I'll be okay with I am not there yet <laughs> I don't want to experience that I had moments where I almost did where I said this loneliness is more torturous than being cut up by Singleton or anyone who is on his soul developmental level my haters okay yes they would do that okay they would i say one wrong word they would punch me into the ground they would to kick my brain out okay and it is let's be very realistic about this okay I talked to Paul earlier about this as I was crying. I said the majority of humans are sadistic. Okay, so there's only 20% that, that will risk their lives to drive over a rubber tortoise. 
in, in that experiment that psychologists did of a desert highway. They put a desert tortoise replica in rubber there that looks very, very real. And they put that there in between the lanes in that there, there's one area where there's grass in, in between the lanes. There's no, there, there, there's no border partitions or anything, no cones or, or like traffic wall pieces or something. And they put the installed cameras to film who drove over that. I, I really wish they would actually crack down on these people, but. They didn't. They just wanted to observe. That was a that's, that was a psychology experiment with regular people, and they saw that that it was twenty percent of the people driving down that road from any direction that would that would that would risk their lives and the lives of others and certainly the lives of that desert tortoise that they thought was a real desert tortoise. So they, would, they would risk also going to prison and they would drive into the middle and drive over the desert tortoise with their truck or car. 20%, okay? Now those are the full-fledged psychopaths they have no fear and they have no empathy and they are bloodthirsty they're sadistic so now what is the dark number of people that would do the same but just don't do it because they they don't want it, want their car to roll over or go to prison so what is that dark number? What is the percentage of people that, what's the, the entire percentage of people that would drive over that, drive over any live animal or child or human, adult, if they could, if there were no repercussions, if there were, there were no penalties involved? No consequences. Okay, so what is the actual number of that? I think the number would probably be sixty percent. So maybe seventy. And and the reason why I say this because Marina Abramovich, that act, that 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 artist. Marina Abramovich, the artist from Yugoslavia. I think she's from Yugoslavia. She did an art exhibit. She did an experiment a long time ago when she was like in her early 20s. And she stood in a room for 10 hours straight. And she had a bunch of stuff, paraphernalia, chainsaw, a gun that was loaded, knives, all kinds of things on the table. And she stood next to the table and she said to the audience, you can come on stage here now and you can do with me whatever you want for the next 10 hours. And I take full responsibility for it. Nobody will be held accountable. I make sure of that. You are really legally exempt from any kind of legal rep repercussions. And there were about, I don't know, 30 people that participated in that. And they were not artists, they were just there, like, like visitors. And I guess more visitors, but 30 pe about 30 people that were actively participating in this. That would j then for the next 10 hours take the chainsaw and and scare her with that or, and tie her up with a rope and 
there were there were like I don't know two women or so that painted hearts on her and the rest of the people most of them were men I don't know if there there were some cruel women also among them I think they were but but all these other all the other people like from 30 people the, most of them the vast majority of them did really cruel things to her so cruel that part of her hair she had brown dark brown hair part of her hair became white at at age 20 just from the fear of that but she did not walk away she didn't chicken out she stayed there standing there for oh boy baby dog why do you do this <laughs> sudden absolutely sudden shut thus the movement the movements of a Staffordshire, of an American Staffordshire, the movements are lightning fast. I mean, lightning strike. From total resting to <laughs> like this. Striking me again into my belly and always, always hitting me into my breasts. Always, all the time, all the time. And I cry, I cry about that, you know, this is really bad. So, oh, I'm sorry, you don't know better. You don't know better. You don't know better, but this is happening all the time. If I don't pay attention, if I, if I do something, if I'm on the computer or something, he will he will hit me real 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 hard with his fingernails into my belly or into my breasts, and it hurts, you know. And that is so that is so lightning fast that movement that I I can't even prepare for it, you know. I don't even know when this is happening again. <laughs> the next time this he's striking at me. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's not easy. Okay. It's not easy at all. So this situation here, so I'm just gonna sum sum this video up now. This situa this situation here is not for me. Okay, it's not for me. I am I am not with this is not the right life partner. This is not the right living situation. This is not the right dog for me. I love him unconditionally. Okay. But this is not this is not what I need. Okay. This situation here is not what I need. And I have absolutely no idea how to break out of this situation. I have absolutely no idea. And all day long, I felt like I was psychologically paralyzed. All day long. Because of this situation. So he's gonna strike me again. Yes. Yes, because he wants attention. That's why he wants attention. He wants attention. And then hurts real bad, you know. Sudden suddenly we hit with sharp fingernails, like really hard, you know. And he would also he would jump on me, on top of me. If I'm sitting on the on the grass, he would all of a sudden, like lightning fast, would jump right on top of me, on my face, my breast. He doesn't know better. He does just, he's never been, He. Ne I, th I don't know what happened to him in his past, you know, that he may have been in a cage. So, but this is soul school of the hardest caliber you can imagine. This is... I mean, it's difficult, you know, difficult. This is a difficult situation in regards to not having the dog I want, okay? But that's not the end of the world. What's the end, what's really the end of the world, what feels like the end of the world for me is being paralyzed by fear. I am paralyzed by fear. I am paralyzed by 
terror of humans. Most humans. The vast majority of humans. I think the vast majority of humans cannot be trusted. The vast majority are sadistic. And if they hang out with someone who is all butter and kind, then they, they see their opportunity. And if they think that the person is not going to defend themselves, like Marina Abramovich in the art experiment, then they will go for it. So she stood there just crying, just tears, just streaming the whole time. Just sad. Sad about that image of the human species. Just sad. How, how horrible. She did a bunch of those things in her life. And my favorite one is uh, the one, the artist is present in New York. She was sitting there in a gown on a chair for about 10 hours also, I think. And people would be standing in line around several blocks to get in there, to be able to sit with the, the artist, sit in front of her on a chair. And people would would stand in line and, and wait until it's their turn. And, and there was a little, cute little baby, like four-year-old boy. Who would, he, he was real excited, an advanced soul himself. He was real excited to meet her. And he sat there for a couple of minutes. And they would sit there and just look in her eyes, just look without any distraction. Just look into her eyes. Just like that. For as long as they could handle it. Yeah. And and then at some point people will leave. The kid left sooner, of course. And, and at some point they will leave and then the next person in line will sit there in front of Marina and look at her like this. And sometimes she would cry, and sometimes she would smile. But she would be looking into these people's eyes completely. I don't know if I can, I can demonstrate this with this camera here. But, because I'm looking at myself now, and, but I really have to look like this to demonstrate this. Okay, and she did this for 10 hours, looking in people's eyes, and a lot of people started crying. There, was, there were several Oriental girls. They have never in their lives experienced someone being there, really there for them, fully, unconditionally. And that brought up tears, that brought up a lot of emotions. That's like, for the first time in their lives, someone is actually there for them. That's, that's a phenomenal, phenomenal experiment that she did. That is, that is the most phenomenal thing I have ever seen in my life. This is a phenomenal God level soul. Marina Abramovich. She really is. So, yes. So, I'm wrapping the video up now. I had a dream. I had a nightmare the other day. I was dreaming about an artist lady creating a huge painting on the floor. And she would finally sit down on the painting and let everyone walk over her and pour paint over her 
and at some point she would disappear in that frame with the paint. More and more people would come pour more paint on it until until the entire woman was she was kind of she chained herself to the bottom of the until the whole woman was gone and the last piece of her scarf was drowned as well and then people would keep pouring paint over that until she had like two feet of paint on top of her of course she drowned and died what a dream what a horrible dream so that's the nature of my dreams okay and that just shows you how how horrifically unhappy I am. Okay. Peace and love.